If you were still in Congress, would you vote for an assault weapons ban? Uh, I was generally supportive of national efforts towards closing the gun to a loophole, towards having a conversation about which type of weapons were, you know, as you know, fully automatic weapons already effectively banned. We shouldn't say banned. There's a way to get a federal license to operate one. But if you're talking about a similar process where you need an additional license or background check for some of the most high-powered weapons, uh, I did support that as a member of Congress. Gotcha. That's the kind of thing that we should be looking at nationally, but not to the exclusion of all these other things that we're talking about, which can be important as well. So you believe there should be classifications of certain types of weapons. Would you support an assault rifle ban? Well, I voted for it, Jennifer. Uh, it's already come up in the House several months back. So that's sitting in the Senate, um, and that's, uh, that's where it resides right now. There's talk of more red flag laws, which allow authorities to temporarily confiscate firearms if mm. the person is a threat to themselves or others. You're one of five Republican House members who voted for a federal red flag law this summer, and you're the only one of the five who ran for reelection. Should the Republican Party support red flag laws? Are you noticing any shift among your colleagues? Yes, yeah, so it depends on how it's written, Jennifer. So, for example, the state of Indiana. Uh, Republican House, Republican Senate, Republican governor signed uh, a similar bill like that uh, in a law. In Florida, same situation after Parkland, Republican House, Republican Senate, uh, Governor Rick Scott at the time, Republican governor, signed it into law. And a Republican governor now, Rick DeSantis, has uh, kept that law in the book. So there are ways you can write it where it preserves due process, protects law-abiding gun owners' rights, but at the same time advances community safety because, like I said, with every single one of these tragedies, whether it be Parkland or Uvalde uh, or Chesapeake, Virginia, or any of these, it's incumbent upon us to, to analyze the situation. Where were the gaps? Was it a gap in the mental health system? Was it, was it a HIPAA reporting issue? Was it a loophole in the background mm -hmm. checks? Or was it a, something different?